I come to you in the name of the Lord. Whoever you are and wherever you may be, know that I love you and God loves you and that you are not alone, even if you feel unworthy. He has a will for you today. I pray that you hear him. It's a good time to follow Jesus. There is mercy and grace available for you today. We only have a few days on this earth. Let us enjoy them. Now let's take a breath in. And a breath out. To the word of God we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their hearts, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear before him. That which hath been now is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. And moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time, and there is for every purpose and for every work. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts, even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go unto one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore, I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Amen. The word of God. This is encouragement along the way. I pray that you have been encouraged by the holy reading of his word. Let's talk about it a little bit. Wow. You know, uh, I like to think that sometimes I say something um, of use in these encouragements to the believer, but wow, if all, if I just read this again, the believer would be multiplied blessed because man, this is some wisdom right here. If you haven't listened, listened to Ecclesiastes one and two, or just read it for yourself. The wisdom packed in these 12 chapters of this book, it's so profound. Um, I've already explained what it's done to me a little bit, but let's go to the word. Um, let's just start at the beginning, verse 1 to verse 8. But we're not going to read all of them. Let's just talk about it. A time and a season for everything under the sun. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. <laughs> There are seasons in life, and thank God there are seasons. How boring would life be if we knew everything? How boring would life be if uh, everything was the same? How boring would life be if there was no mystery involved? God in his infinite wisdom 
uh, continually changes the situation, the environment, the circumstance, the season. And man, I, I'm just going to be the first one to say, thank God that for, uh, different seasons. Thank God that seasons change. You know, seasons don't only change in the natural sense and, in, in uh, our world with weather, um, uh, spring, summer, autumn, winter, but seasons also change in our hearts and in our lives. This might, this may be a season of heaviness for you. This may be a season of death for your loved ones, but seasons change. And I just want to say again, that thank God seasons change because there are brighter days ahead. God is doing a new thing. And perhaps you feel heavy today. Well, I just want you to know that his mercies are new every morning. And God desires harmony for your life. So I'll just leave that there. Um, Verse 12 and 13. I know that there is no good in them, but that for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy all the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. Guys, this is huge. I have found nothing better for a man to do than to eat and to drink and to enjoy his life. Now, this doesn't give you a free pass for hedonism, because what did Solomon tell us in the beginning of chapter 2? I put to test mirth and all kinds of pleasures, and what did I find? It was all vanity, all meaningless, none of it. I mean, he looked at all the work his hands had wrought, and he hated it. He was distraught. Because he has to leave all the work that he does in this world to one after him. And who knows whether that will be a wise man or a fool. I have found nothing better for a man to eat and to drink and to enjoy his life. So I ask you, are you eating and drinking and enjoying your life currently? Furthermore, if you are even able to enjoy your life, that that is not even from you. But the ability to enjoy your life is a gift from God. It is 0% you and 100% a gift. The ability to enjoy your life is a gift. So again, Ecclesiastes is a perception, point of view changing book. It realigns your mind to wisdom thinking. And I suppose that's just a uh, general rule of thumb for the entire Bible. It realigns your your heart and mind and spirit and soul and it opens your eyes so that you can see and it opens your ears that you can hear. It's living and breathing. It's pulsating. It's supernatural. It's vibrating. Anyway, continuing on. Let's go to verse 18. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them. That, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Verse 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth to them. As one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath. So that man hath no preeminence above the beast for all is vanity. Guys, we're all going to die. Seasons of life and seasons of death. I mean, how many days do we have on this earth? Do we have 75 years? Do we have 100 years? Do we have 50 years? <laughs> um, but Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We don't know how much time we have left, y'all. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be 50 years from now. Who knows? But all I'm going to say to you is that we're going to die. All of us will die. That is a reality. And so... Oddly enough, funnily, funny enough, um, this puts things into perspective. It helps us to enjoy our life, knowing that our days are numbered. It helps us to soak in the sunshine. It helps us to breathe in the oxygen. You know, I was thinking about some things I was grateful for yesterday or the day before, and I told someone that the day was very wonderful and they said, why was the day, why is the day so wonderful? And I said, because of the sunlight. And then they said, anything else? And I said, oxygen. God provideth both sunlight and oxygen and he never asks for us to do anything in return. 
He continually provides us with sunlight and oxygen. That is praiseworthy, my friends. Anyway, I will end with the last verse, verse 22. Wherefore, I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Guys, enjoy your life. The word of the Lord. Amen. Uh, let's <clears throat> go to the hymn of today, a hymn of testimony, witness, and evangelism called Redeemed, based off Psalm 107, verse 2, which says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed and I say so. I testify. Amen. <laughs> Redeem redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence, his love is the, oh, with me shall continually dwell. <laughs> redeemed, redeemed, Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of Him all the day long. I sing, for I cannot be silent, His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in His beauty the King in whose light delight. Who lovingly guards every footstep And gives me a song in the night Redeemed, redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed, redeemed His child and forever I am hmm. Verse number three I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing, for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Y'all, those are facts. I can testify that is my life. I can't help but sing. It's a compulsion. And you know what? I believe King David shared in the same compulsion. He could not help but sing. And you know what? People look at you. People will look at you like you're weird, like you're strange, like who is this guy? I can't put my hand on you. What's going on with you? It's the joy of the Lord. It's um, the love. It's the Holy Spirit inside is what they're perceiving. So guys, sing, sing louder and sing more. Amen. Sole Deo Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest, glory to God forever and ever in Jesus' holy, perfect, mighty name I pray. And in the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, I pray, amen, amen, and amen.